Now let's take the black wolf and his new toy. Rally all available forces. I want them ready to move upon my word. And relay to sell it to a friend the oil to order the sale. That is all. Maelstrom stands ready. What are the flames? Ready as we like to be. I need only give the word to Royale. Has there been no word from Ishgard? None. The dragons have got their tongues. Silent to the last. I was unwise to hope for the better. What would stir the Archbishop to open his holy mouth if not this? And he claims the fury for his god. Tis bad comedy. The slowly sea has made his choice. We will proceed without its cooperation. I believe we are all acquainted with the terms of the Black Wolf's ultimatum. We must agree upon a course of action, not less than the fate of Erzia hangs upon the decision of this council. Balbessar claims to want the power to smite primals. Should we yield to him, he pledges to win the rid the well of the false gods, yet offer resistance, and he swears we shall share share the primal's fate. Pardon me, my bluntness, but I like not these choices. It's too great a decision for any one of our nations to make alone. Choose we surrender our resistance, we must answer as one, for if but one surrenders and the rest shall fall, surely fall. Let us pray for the wisdom to do right by all our peoples. All right. Teos Moogle, you're always on the way. <laughs> Thancreed's plight troubles us all, yet we cannot allow anything to come between us and our goal. So long as the ultimate weapons exist, Azuria will never know peace. Let us go to the Alliance leaders, Nara, and help them to make the right decision. Grim tidings, Naren. It seems that word of the Ultima Weapon's existence has already reached the Alliance leaders, in the form of an ultimatum. They have gathered in the Fragment Chamber and are deliberating their answer even as we speak. Beleaguered as they are, I fear they may well elect to lay down their arms in the belief that surrender will spare their people until the suffering. Yet nothing could be further from the truth. That which the Black Wolf offers will doom Israel, not deliver it, and leaders must be made aware of this. Let us hurry to them, Naren, and ensure that they do not act in ignorance of their consequences. Alright, I think I picked the right floor in any case. Still only about halfway to level 47, that's not uh, too pleasing for me. 
I may have to do like a dungeon or two to get myself a bubble for each level 47 quest soon, here soon, which I assume we are. Let's see. Council of the Alliance leader is presently in progress of the Fragrant Chamber. I must ask you to step away from the doors, madame. I'm sorry, you're here on behalf of the Science of the Seventh Dawn? A thousand pardons, my lady. Of course you may enter. Ah, we keep treading the same ground. Van Belsar's demands are clear. Alas, our minds are not. I've never been one to shy from a fight. But if this weapon of theirs can do all they claim... It has been five years since the Calamity, and our people have scarce begun to rebuild their lives. Can we now, in good conscience, call upon them to risk what little they have left? I would spare them the pain of further conflict. Conflict, I say, though that would imply forces set in opposition. If the combined might of three primals could not stay Garlemald's new terror, what meaningful resistance can we offer? We who struggle to quell the foes who rise up within our own borders. Long have we fought the Primals, but to what end? We strike them down at no small cost, only for them to rise again and again. Are we to play this profitless game for the rest of days? I, for one, grow tired of it. Mistake me not. I do not propose to trade one tyranny for another. I love liberty. But conciliation need not mean oppression. By the Twelve, though neither of you cried surrender, your every word betokened it. <sighs> not that I deny there is truth in what you say, nor can I rightly claim that Ulda is ready to fight. Refugees flood our gates, and beastmen swarm our land while the great and the good do nothing. My flames struggle to bear the burden. I put on a grand show at the Remembrance Service, made all manner of lofty promises. I've made good on not a bloody one. Do not blame yourself, Raban. You said only that which the people needed to hear. All present have done the same. Our citizens had become lost to hope. If our words serve to kindle it in them anew, better we speak than remain silent. Our enemy condemns us for failing our people. Yet what does he care for their well-being? While we labored to rebuild their lives, the Black Wolf built instruments of murder with which to end them. Her Majesty speaks true. For all our failings, the people's well-being has ever been our foremost priority. While none among us ever doubted that the Empire would one day resume its war, we scarcely had means enough to solve the problems of the present. Aye, which is why we look to others to safeguard our future. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Alas, they are gone, and the Black Wolf is at our door. Admiral! I fear you are mistaken! Alphinord? Minfilia? And Seven Hells! Master Garland? A 
And you, dear friend. By Ralga, you're alive. All of you. As we approached, I would swear I heard talk of surrender. But I know that cannot be. It is not the Aeorzean way. Hear me, my friends. Accepting the Galleon's offer to vanquish the Primals would be folly. Folly, I say. For might is not the answer to the Primal threat. Indeed, the more the Empire exerts its strength, the worse matters will become. Primals enter this world when mortals call upon them, and mortals are wont to appeal to a higher power when they are desperate. Nothing is more certain to breed desperation in the Beast Tribes than the Garleans' proposed solution. The true answer lies in a lasting peace. But the Garleans only know war and conquest. Should Eorzea fall into their hands, there will be such suffering as none can imagine. We are not blind to the many challenges that each of your nations face. Yet you must not give in. I remember five years ago when you wagered all for the sake of the realm? Remember what you fought for, what you were willing to die for. Let the memories rekindle the fire in your heart, for Eorzea has need of it again. Come what may, we Scions will never give up the fight. And so I bid you stand with us, and together we shall safeguard the future of the realm. A great man once said that a shrewd merchant grasps not for the quick profit, but invests in the future. Wise words, eh, Raban? Sid, I... Uh... Your words stir and shame me in equal measure. How could I contemplate surrender? I know full well that all we have we owe to the sacrifices of those who went before us. Yet the seeming hopelessness of our plight robbed me of my insight. We Gridanians have no love for war, yet we have still less for those who would threaten our homeland. Ever have we fought to protect those things we hold dear, and this shall never change. Gridania will go to war. We will fight the Empire for the sake of the realm and all who abide here. One homeland. The thought of losing another had blunted my resolve. But no man knows better than I that if you want aught, you'd best be ready to die for it. With great danger comes the chance for great glory and great profit. We old dons who have turned sand into gold know this well. How many times have we fallen into the pit of despair, only to have you pluck us out? I fair lost count. Reckless. The lot of you. Like bloody pirates. Well, I won't waste my breath trying to talk you round, on account of being a pirate myself. And the pirate who shrinks from a challenge is no pirate at all. Those who would pick a quarrel with us must choose. Back down, or go down with all hands. Let the Garleans come. 
the united strength of Limsa Lominsa will be waiting for them. If our realm is to be free of this pall of darkness, let it be by our own hands. For Aeosia! We must needs consider how the weapon may be brought to bear against us. The Maelstrom will secure strategic points along the coastline. In the meantime, the flames will deploy at... Be at ease, my friends. You have banished our doubts. Pray leave the military matters to us and retire to the waking sands. We will send word anon. Right. Back to the Waking Sands. It'll be just like old times. <laughs> this statue being here, huh. Maybe I'm just forgetting. Feels like old times again. I cannot well express my relief to think that the Alliance came so close to surrender. But the fire in their hearts has been rekindled, and they will fight to the last. This warmth inside. Did you feel it too, Grandfather? I would know something. Was that your power at work earlier? Nothing of the sort. The leaders of Eosia had lost their way. I merely helped them to find it again. Oh, hello. Yes, our party returned just a moment ago. How close are you? It's all right, Sid. We must needs plan our next move. Pray continue liaising with your respective nations. Sid, would you be our man in Ulda? 
I'll be whatever and wherever you need me to be. We haven't a moment to waste. All right, let's do this. Sankrid's fate weighs heavy on my mind. I cannot bear to think of him enthralled to an Asian. Mayhap you know this already, but the Asians are immortal beings without physical form. Since time immemorial, they have fanned the flames of chaos from the shadows. That they might work unseen, the Asians entrap and possess mortal men by means of malign artifacts known as Crystals of Darkness. One such crystal may yet be the key to saving Thancred. This is a crystal of darkness. A mere replica, created using data obtained from anomalous crystals found across Eorzea. It comes to us courtesy of the students of Baldessian, our distant allies. Even for an Archon, Thancred's talents are exceptional. We all had complete confidence in him. It was for this reason that none among us foresaw the danger in sending him to investigate the Asians alone. Thancred had been striving to fill the void left by Louis Soir. Yet, it was plain that he was overtaxing himself. Yeah, he would volunteer for everything and work till he was dizzy. And the toll taken by his exertions made him vulnerable to Asian influence. The crystal that binds Thancred must be somewhere on his person. If we could but destroy it, his Asian possessor would be compelled to relinquish control over him. You have proven the stoutest of allies, standing with us through thick and thin. Yet the most perilous struggle is still to come. For the sake of the realm, and Thancred, I ask that you lend us your strength once more. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. As I am sure you are aware, the realm was saved from certain doom five years ago by heroes known as the Warriors of Light. What you may not be aware of is that your many feats in service to the Scions have prompted folk to make certain... comparisons. I must confess, you do remind me of them. Yet remember this, however glorious the past, it is the hero's lot to be judged on the deeds of the present. A new darkness threatens the realm, and the people cry out for a savior. I believe that you are she, a warrior of light, here in the present, guided by the crystal's will. Come, my friends, let us fight to safeguard the future of our beloved Eorzea. All right, the finale is beginning to open the curtain. Wow, that's uh, quite a bit of a leveling away. Huh. In my case, I think that's going to be it for today. And when we return, I'm not quite sure. I'm either going to level off, off screen, or I might find something else to do. I'm not quite sure yet. So we'll see in the next video. So see you guys then.